How's it going, folks? Start off this review with a couple of news updates about the channel. My PS5 broke. After my battle with X-Death in Final Fantasy V, the repair guy said it would cost the same amount to replace the power supply and motherboard as it would to replace the whole system. So rather than replacing the system, I'm going to switch to Xbox and try out the new Xbox. Also, the channel recently hit 4,000 subscribers, so welcome to all the new faces. I'd love to hear what games you all are playing and what you love about gaming in the comments. Now, to the review. Tears of the Kingdom is the biggest piece of shit ever. What is true? What is false? Legends and myths often contain alternative facts, alternative histories. You can never truly know what happened in the past. History is written by the winners, but legends are written by the losers. The facts of Tears of the Kingdom do not conform to the canon in any of the other games. This could probably be a hard game for some fans to accept for that reason. However, there is no discrepancy. Nintendo has said that their new stance on the Zelda timeline is the games are like myths, sometimes directly contradictory, and that's okay. I think it's okay as well, because over the course of the game, I came to the conclusion that Nintendo is lying. They have been brainwashed by the demonic Zonai, who have used their company as an instrument to rewrite the Zelda history, placing themselves as descendants of the gods and the very founders of Hyrule. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a game about deception. With each new story arc, we see a new way that Zelda has supposedly deceived the people of Hyrule. Meanwhile, we are supposed to believe that the Zonai, who we've never heard of before, are actually really important and not brainwashing Zelda? I'm here to tell you, don't fall for their tricks. The Zonai are just giant rabbits, and tricks are for kids. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom's narrative is the worst one so far. Beyond the awful storyline, every character talks way too much, and they never have anything interesting to say. Even before the Zonai's brainwashing of Hyrule, it seems Zelda has been hard at work brainwashing the citizens of Hyrule. Seriously, all anyone can talk about in this game is Zelda. Doesn't anyone have an actual life, or does everyone simply exist be a fan of Zelda's massive ego. The characters are actually too annoying to talk to. I had to skip through most of the conversations because the dialogue is too boring. There is this side quest where this grown male Hylian is dating this Zora child and not even want to know what the details of this arrangement are. In the same fashion as the previous title, Breath of the Wild, Link traverses the countryside looking for memories, which are little vignettes the player can enjoy as a reward. Unfortunately, in this game, like the characters inhabiting Hyrule, the memories are just about Zelda, who has time traveled to the past accidentally and is hanging out with the weird furries called Zonai, who definitely don't look cool, and supposedly they founded Hyrule. Which I'm not going to talk about because it doesn't make any sense and we know from Skyward Sword that the Hylians existed way before, but whatever. What is a real shame is Link doesn't get to have his own arc in this game. It's a bummer because Link is the main character and the hero of the series. Not sure why they chose to only focus on Zelda in this game. For the uninitiated, despite being called The Legend of Zelda, the series does not revolve around Princess Zelda at all. Many of the games don't even have Zelda in them. I'm not saying Zelda shouldn't get her own story, but if she did, it should be in her own game or as a side arc. In the games we play as Link, Link should get a story. 
It's lame to have to watch someone else suck up all the glory while the player does all the work. Essentially, Tears of the Kingdom is a game where Link is supposed to look for Zelda for some reason. There's a vague existential threat that has captured the land called Gloom, which does not seem to present any real imminent danger. Meanwhile, Zelda has started going all crazy, flying around Hyrule and messing with the kingdoms. Why is it Link's job to follow after her? It's unclear. She actually seems to be fine. If she wants to fly around, I don't see why Link is the one that has to stop her. It seems some of the Yiga clan and Minoru, one of the furries from the past, believe that Link is Zelda's bodyguard, which also makes no sense. The Yiga, of course, should know that Link is not Zelda's bodyguard. That is, in fact, the responsibility of the Sheikah tribe. The Yiga should know this because they used to be part of the Sheikah tribe as well. They don't get into the Triforce much in this game and the last installment. However, Link is one of the carriers of the Triforce, as is Zelda. And in most titles, he has no connection to Zelda whatsoever. All in all, the motivation of this game is lame, makes all the work Link has to do somewhat depressing. Maybe the writers did know what they were doing when they named the new goo covering Hyrule Gloom. Beyond the overarching story of the Zelda games, the game also seems to have flagrant disregard for how reality works. Link can just jump from infinite height into water and somehow survive. Nobody seems to know what a well is. Every single well in this game is completely empty, and there are many. I appreciate this is a reference to a common trope in the game before, where often well ends up going into a well. But in the previous games, he usually had to drain those wells before entering them. Even the new wells built in this game have no water in them. Do the writers of this game even know what a well is? The writers also seem to be confused about the concept of time and how it works. Characters in the game have visions of Zelda, and then they're like, I saw a vision of Zelda in the past. Wait a minute. That means the Zelda in our present time can't be the real Zelda, because Zelda's in the past. Sorry, but actually, that is exactly how time works. A person can be in the present and also in the past at the same time, and it does not break any rules. In fact, that's the norm. That's how time is, works. That's how we expect it to. In the end, as a final fuck you to the player, they show the leaders of the various kingdoms of Hyrule, including the new appointed King of Zora, Sidon, and the Chieftain of Gerudo, bowing to Zelda for no reason whatsoever. I guess because she's the princess or the queen of Hyrule, she's also the queen of all the other nations? I have no idea what she did to subjugate all of the nations of Hyrule, but someone needs to end Zelda's reign of terror. I give the narrative of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom a negative one out of ten. Little has changed with the visuals of Tears of the Kingdom from the previous game, made six years ago. Whereas the graphics of the time were fairly new, the visual style of the game has fallen a little flat in that time with other new next-gen consoles Nintendo has to compete with looking a lot better. At the same time, the lack of new material gives the game a strong feeling of sameness to the previous title, making the overall experience a bit tired right out of the box. Of course, there have been some changes. Hyrule is a mess now. A departure from the quiet, natural beauty of the previous game. Now that Hyrule has had some time to develop after Calamity Ganon, apparently that means leaving construction sites with no purpose littered all over the map. Hyrule looks more like a child's sandbox rather than a land ravaged by time trying to regain its sense of self once again. The two new areas of the game add little to the visuals. The sky islands are sporadic and they all look the same. The depths is entirely new. 
but it is also covered in complete darkness. Once the player does manage to shed some light, the area is a bland wasteland. Somehow, despite being nearly identical, the game is actually worse looking than its predecessor, which is already dated. I give the visuals a 7 out of 10. The gameplay of the Zelda games is typically their strong point, and that is true in this game as well. Many of the core mechanics are inherited from its predecessor. However, there are several new mechanics which make the gameplay feel new as well. The game is very different from other Zelda titles. The time reversal mechanic is very Zelda-y. But it's the construction mechanic which really sets this game apart. It's a unique mechanic which is very interesting on its own, but it's actually not very Zelda-y. The robotics and vehicles Link and Create feel more like they're out of a different game altogether. So the games always have puzzles, but they are never really creative. This game features many puzzles which are difficult not by their intricacy of design, but by simply telling the player to get from point A to point B and letting them figure out which tools to use to do that. It's a much more mechanical and creative experience, which feels more like Roblox, Lego, or Ratchet and Clank. It's still fun. I don't think all Zelda games should use this mechanic as it's a big departure from other titles. But Zelda has plenty of one-offs, and that's not really new. This is a much more tedious game than in previous titles. The Sky Islands are repetitive, and all exactly the same. Many of the land shrines are simply find the right hole in the mountain type puzzles, which is a pain in the ass. It's a needle in a haystack kind of gameplay, which is not actually fun. The depths as well took that one pitch black level from the last game, which was fun, but by the end of that level, I think we all had enough of the darkness. Well, they decided to take that concept and create a new map the size of the entire game map and repeat the formula. The depths are vacant, boring, and annoying to traverse. I only managed to uncover a small portion by the end of my 100 hours plus playthrough, and I had no interest in exploring further. They're too dark and annoying to try and get through, and there's nothing there anyway once you finally make it to a different area. The merge ability is interesting, However, there are too many arrow combinations, and it gets annoying switching between the merges. Nintendo is also far too stingy with those arrows. I found myself running out constantly. Not fun when you are trying to explore one of the many cave systems or depths, especially when some enemies basically require that you have some arrows on hand. All in all, I'd say the puzzles in the game are significantly less creative relying too heavily on the construction mechanic and needle in a haystack style gameplay. The Zonai Robotics were an interesting addition. However, like the progenitor race which created them, they feel out of place in a Zelda game. I did like the new enemies added to the game, harkening back to older titles. It was fun encountering like-likes, re-deads, Gleoks again in their new iterations. I would have liked to see more of that and a more traditional Zelda experience in the game. I give the gameplay an 8 out of 10. The game feels more like a spin-off of the series rather than a true main title game. Much like Spirit Tracks, the game relies heavily on a totally new mechanic which really sets the game apart from other titles, but in the end feels very different and maybe even a little bit gimmicky. In the end, I played the game out of love for the series rather than actual interest in the game itself. The story is too unmotivating and the visuals too boring. I actually ended up playing Breath of the Wild three times before, so this was my fourth venture into this version of Hyrule. The game is too similar and too tacked on to feel like a true new title feels more like an extensive DLC. 
I don't recommend this game. Hopefully future titles will get back to a more classic experience, because I am a big fan of the games in general. I give The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom a 3 out of 10. And some crazy blue, because I'm sick of these damned weapons breaking all the time. Check us out on Twitch at Waves from the Outside to see live streams. I'll be playing Firmament next from Cyan Studios.